Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to yet another in-depth first person walk around here on NNT Auto Reviews. My name is Tyler as always behind the camera and today we are taking a look at an all new all electric Audi SUV and it is of course the 2020 Audi e-tron Sportback in the baseline premium plus trim level. Okay, so before we get into the details on this e-tron Sportback, I'd really like to highlight some things on the window sticker here. So we have the window sticker back here, and it is some deeply tinted glass, so you might not be able to see it too well, but I will span down so that you can see all the standard features. And just keep in mind that this is a very basic model. So the Premium Plus is actually the base trim level, and there are no packages on this vehicle. So it'll be very interesting to see what the quote-unquote base model of the e-tron Sportback looks like for 2020. So as you can see on our options list, we really only have four different options. That's our paint color. It's our um, Audi beam rings, which beam a projector light onto the ground at night. We also have the um, side thorax airbags, which are a $400 option. We also have the interior protection kit, which comes with the floor mats, things like that. We have a destination charge of $9.95, and if we go all the way to the bottom, we can see we have a total sticker price of $80,075. So it does seem like a lot for a base model, but truly, trust me, once we get into the details of this car, it is far from a base model on any other car that I've ever seen. We have some shipping information off to the left and some crash ratings off to the right, and we also have our government um, fuel economy ratings. Okay, so taking a walk to the side of the e-tron Sportback, you can really see that Sportback shape and what differentiates it from the normal e-tron, which is more of like, for instance, a Q5 shape rather than a Q8 shape on this car. You can see it really starts from like the middle of the rear door and it really slopes down towards the end be really interesting to see how much room we have in the back um, in this e-tron however while we are on the side we could talk about color choices and there are 10 of them this one in particular being the mythos black metallic a little bit of an extra charge for the metallic and we do have a 115 inch wheelbase and finally moving around to the rear of the sportback you could even see more the accentuations on this sloping rear deck and the deck lid spoiler, which is pretty neat and kind of built into the bodywork on the deck lid of this car. Now, while we're back here, we could talk about our drivetrains. This car obviously does have the all wheel drive system. It is actually branded as a Quattro system on the rear deck lid. And the way it works is there's a smaller motor on the front that drives the front wheels and a little bit of a larger motor in the back that drives the rear wheels, thus making it an all wheel drive car. Okay, so we're going to start getting in depth here with the details on the front of the vehicle. Now I'll give you a nice head-on view. You can see that very large grill. We're going to start off with the headlamps because they're very interesting. You have matrix LED headlights as standard on all e-trons, which is a very huge plus. But I'm going to cut to two different clips here. Now the first clip I'm going to give you is with all the lights on and with the turn signals going. And you can see how that looks. You have the dynamic turn signals and whatnot. Then you could also see here when you press the unlock button on the key fob that you have welcoming lights. And it gives you a pretty neat animation there. Very neat. Now you can see these little cutouts in the front bumper. Those are for your headlight washers. If you look down below, you also have some uh, aerodynamic air inlets that move air around the wheel. You also have parking sensors that go across the front bumper. On this beautiful grill, you only have a small portion of it that actually takes in air. The rest of it is blocked off. You have sensors on it. You also have the uh, front camera. Again, keep in mind that all the features that I'm pointing out to you come standard on the e-tron since we are taking a look at a base model. All the way around the trim, you have this beautiful sort of matte chrome finish and you have gray painted slats in the inside of the grill. 
You also have a little bit of a larger air intake down below with some of the silver trim. Very attractive front end, pretty similar to the regular e-tron. Now taking a look at the hood, we have a quite large and long hood, just like the normal e-tron again. We have some pretty prominent creases towards the edges and towards the center. If we move down here, we can see our wheel archers are completely painted, going all the way down the side. And we have our standard wheel option. These are, of course, the standard wheels that come with the e-tron Sportback, and they're a 20-inch bicolor design, wrapped in 255-50 tires up front. Have this pretty cool machine face, kind of looks like a blade, and then we have the dark gray accents on the inside very large brake rotors. Take a look at the size of those. And keep in mind, this is a 20 inch wheel, so these are very large brakes on this vehicle. Taking a look down the side, we have more of that matte chrome that goes all the way around the windows. We also have gloss pillars that make the appearance of one continuous piece of glass. We also have our charging port here with the button where you could just press and the port will open right up for you. It is all illuminated at night, and you have both your 220 and 110 volt um, outlets there. Press the button, it'll whir on back. We actually have the mirrors for this vehicle, which have the uh, cameras for the 360 degree views camera system. We have LED turn signals as well as your blind spot monitoring on the inside of the mirror so that you can see it better from the inside of the car. We have our door handles with a nice crease that goes all the way along the back. And another crease that starts and goes up and around the door handle towards the back. We have our rear wheels and taking a look up top that's really where the sportback shape uh, shines right above the rear wheels and back here I want to focus on the lighting again we have one beautiful continuous light bar and again I'm going to cut to two different uh, scenes here this is with all of your lights on, parking lights, turn signals, and whatnot. You can see you have full LED lights. And we also have this very neat welcoming light again when you press the unlock button on your key fob. Very neat to see it at night. It really attracts people to this car. I'm going to take a step to the side in a second so that you can see the integrated uh, deck lid spoiler, which looks very nice. You can see really how concaved. The shape is right there, which is pretty neat. We have parking sensors spanning the rear bumper. As far as badging, you have the e-tron badging and your quattro badging. And right underneath the middle of the light bar, you have the trunk release and a reversing camera. Some nice uh, silver trim on the back and no exhaust tips. So usually at this point in the video, I'd pop the hood and talk about all the specs, about the motor and whatnot. So we're going to do just that with this car as well, but it's going to look a little bit different. So under the hood of the e-tron, you can see once again, it is quite large and they do give you some storage. So you just pop this little lid right here, open the plastic compartment. As you can see, it's a perfect amount of space to put all of your charging cables, so they do come with the 110 and the 220 uh, chargers. You can see you have the adapter here, and it is carpeted at the bottom, so you can even put whatever, uh, some sort of valuables in there. You also have illumination, which is nice on the side. You close that down and it'll latch. You can see the latch for the hood to open right down at the bottom. You have some fluids, such as your windshield washer and a bunch of electrical components under here as well.
Okay, so obviously coming standard on the e-tron Sportback, you do have a smart key entry system on all four of the door handles. So you can see this little imprint in the door handle. Now, as long as you have the key fob within a couple of feet of the vehicle, you can lock. The mirrors will fold in and the, door, and the car will chime a beep. And you could also unlock by just putting your hand behind the handle. And you also, I'd like to point this out to you, have electronic door handles. So you can see all you need to do is just pull it a little bit and the car will automatically release the doors and that goes for the same on the inside. So we have the full black leather interior and you can choose between three different color options including this black, a brown and also a beige. So we're going to start off with the materials on the door handle which are very impressive. So we have soft touch up here, it's not quite leather but it is soft touch. We also have soft touch down here as well. Pretty much the rest of the door is going to be a leather or leatherette material. We have stitching as well as some nice bright work as well. We have a strip right here for the ambient lighting. We also have the interior door handles which is pretty cool looking. Again, once you pull a little bit, you could hear the electronic release. In case the battery dies or anything like that goes wrong, you just pull it all the way and it's a mechanical release. Of our unlock and lock. We also have all of our window controls so your child lockouts are individual for each side. We have our power folding and heated mirrors controlling and then we also have all of our window controls. We have two person memory seats, the power trunk button down there and a bunch of storage. And the car actually comes standard with a 16 speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system. And it looks like we have two of those speakers right on the door. So again, where your arm is going to rest is going to be nice soft leatherette with some contrast stitching. Taking a look at the left of the dash, kind of hard to see here with the shadows, but we have some beautiful um, natural grain wood with some uh, gloss accents as well as some metallic accents. We have our headlight controls right here. So they are touch sensitive. Once we get in, I will show you them. You actually rest your finger on the button. It will come up in the screen and show you what setting your light is on. And you can actually press the button to change your light settings. Actually, it will pop up right now. As you can see right in the center. And you also have your front all weather lights. You can see this control a little bit better for the power tilt and telescoping steering wheel. Very nice to have. And we also have a pocket right here where we can flip down. And we have quite a bit of storage. So about half my arm's length um, in storage in it. So it's a pretty deep uh, container there. Down here we of course have the pedals and the hood release. Nice carpeting. Then you also get the carpeting mats that go over them. And we also have some very nice seats they do come heated and cooled as standard. We have adjustable headrests which will move back and forth up and down. Beautiful contrast stitching and also some uh, same color stitching as the seats and the perforations in the seats that the air conditioning can get through to cool your bottom and your back. As far as adjustments go we have um, your typical up and down in both the front and back. You can move the whole seat back and forth as well as your backrest back and forth as well as your four-way lumbar. So here's the key fob for the vehicle. It's the nice new slender and slim Audi uh, key fob that they've been starting to use. We have the lock, unlock, trunk release. The Audi rings at the bottom. We also have a button down here which you could release the physical key on the inside. Panic alarm on the back and the e-tron badging also on the back. But it does have the typical push button ignition. Just press the button, foot on the brake. OK, 
Okay, so hopping inside the cabin, you can see that we have this very, very futuristic feel in, inside here. Going along with the futuristic sort of vibe of an electric vehicle, it really does suit this car and it's very, very modern. Well, we can start off first with what's in front of the driver and it's of course this beautiful steering wheel. Now, it is of course all leather wrapped with some contrast stitching on the inside. We have these beautiful sort of wings that go out as the spokes of the steering wheel. Now, I believe you can also get this steering wheel on the Audi A8, which is absolutely beautiful as well. So it's very nice to see that they share a steering wheel with Audi's flagship luxury sedan. As far as functionalities go, on the steering wheel you can see you have some controls for the virtual cockpit, which we will get into in just a minute. We have the Audi emblem, and it's also the surround of the Audi emblem very much so resembles the grille on the front of the car, so I like that attention to detail. And we also have some media controls such as your Bluetooth voice commands, audio volume skipping, and a pretty much whatever you want it to do button. So you can actually program this button within the infotainment system to do a myriad of different presets. Now you can see that we have paddle shifters on this vehicle, but you're saying, hey, it's an electric car, it doesn't have a real you know, gas motor, real transmission. This actually um, lessens and increases the amount of regenerative braking, which is pretty neat. You could actually, in certain um, instances, actually completely stop the car with the regenerative braking, and that collects the kinetic energy from the braking system and puts it back into the battery pack, thus giving you a better um, electronic fuel range. Behind the steering wheel, we have a couple of stocks. This one for your turn signals, high beams, and whatnot. And you can also turn off your lane keep assist with this end button here. And we also have your adaptive cruise control system here. You can set your distance between the car in front of you and it'll keep that distance. Again, these things are all standard on the Audi e-tron. Then we also have our front and rear wiper stock. We also have up here everybody's favorite, the Audi Virtual Cockpit. Still pretty much the best in the business ever since it came out in, I think, 2016, late 2016, 2017. And we can control the virtual cockpit with all of these buttons here. So this is pretty much a main screen, gives you a bunch of information. You can also use the squirrel wheel. Also press the view so that you can have um, both your uh, power meter and your speedometer be a little bit larger. And then whatever in the center gets a little bit smaller. But for the moment being, we're going to leave that center part a little bit larger so that we can see what's going on in the middle. We could use the squirrel wheel to see how much range we have. Also your consumption, short-term and long-term memory. And then we also have a, a driver's assistance screen as well as your traffic sign recognition. It's a pretty neat little informational screen right there. And then we can use the arrows like this to go across to your radio screen. So as you can see, you have all of your uh, radio stations. Right now it's hooked up to the Sirius XM. You can also move over again to your telephone screen and everybody's favorite, your navigation screen. So this car is actually in a sort of demonstration mode. So you have the Google Maps hooked up, which is actually very cool. It'll show you different gas stations, EV charging stations, whatnot. You actually see we are down in the back lot of the Audi dealership right now. So very, very neat system. You could use the squirrel wheel to squirrel up. It'll zoom in and out. And you can also press the end button over here to input destinations, whatnot, change your different map settings. So that's pretty cool. And in each, in each and every one of your screens, you could any any prime press the view button, and your regular gauges will pop up to be a little bit larger. Now I wanted to talk about the uh, gauges in this car for just a minute, and the fact that you have a actual power gauge. So we have up to 100%, and then also if you put the car into the sport mode with the transmission, you actually get this sort of boost mode, which gives you, I guess you could say, more than 100% of the power, and that's really when this car gets pretty fast. We also have a charge meter, so I showed you how much charge you have left, and the power meter, all that good stuff. Switching it over, you also have your speedometer down there, various information down below, your mileage, your traffic sign information, and whatnot. 
Taking a look up here, we have the nice soft touch uh, dashboard with some stitching. You also have three speakers, so one on each corner and then a center channel speaker in there as well. We have a couple of air vents on top of the wood paneling. And usually in cars, the paneling is kind of like on the face of the dashboard. This is kind of like a wood shelf and it's this beautiful natural grain wood. Even at night over here, this e-tron emblem will actually light up in a few different colors you could choose from, which is really, really pretty neat. So in this particular, well, in all actual e-trons, we have the new Audi touchscreen interface, which is actually pretty intuitive. And I'll just cover a few of the menus, a couple of the settings, so you get a basic gist of the system. But I definitely suggest if you're really serious about buying this car or any, any Audi with this interface, check out a devoted tech help video um, that someone else has made on this because you could really go in depth and spend hours and hours on the settings on this vehicle just because it's so customizable. But we'll just go into the basic screens here and I'll show you what it has to offer. So now we're in the radio screen. We have all of our different presets and uh, radio stations on our Sirius XM and we have our source. We go back to home, we have our media screen, which is where you could plug in your phone, use the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. We have our phone screen right here as well. We have our navigation screen, in case you were asking, yes, you can have the navigation here, as well as here simultaneously if you wanted to. And we have the Google Maps, extremely responsive, you can move all around at real speed and it's not laggy at all, even with the Google Maps. We could also input your destination right over here. We have a bunch of um, settings here. You also have the eTron route planner, which is turned on at the moment so that you could, it'll actually highlight um, places that have EV charging, which is pretty awesome. And you put your, um, you have different uh, settings for the map right here pretty cool. Going back to home, you have your phone apps. So once you have your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto um, hooked up, you can just press that button right there. It'll go right to it. You have your vehicle screen here, which you can quickly access your Audi um, drive select. So we have a bunch of different modes here, which is pretty cool. It goes along with your air suspension, which you could raise and lower manually or it'll raise and lower automatically depending on what mode you're in. So obviously if you're in the off-road mode, the air suspension will be pretty high. If you're in the, um, for example, the dynamic mode, it'll be pretty low so it can kind of slip through the air and whatnot. So, but you could see that we have a, a really, a really nice selection of drive modes here. If we press the individual, you could see what you can customize not too bad you customize the steering feel suspension feel and drive feel and it gives you three different settings for each and over here is where you can manually control your um, air suspension so at the moment it is on its way to the moon and here I'll give you a good uh, exterior view of what it looks like going from its highest point to its lowest point Okay, so now back to our infotainment. We can get out of our drive select and we also have all of these different settings in our vehicle uh, settings area. We can go into our seats. We have a entry assist, which kind of puts the seat back when you get in and then it'll move it back to your memory setting um, once you uh, start the vehicle. We have climate control, lighting and visibility, our interior lighting. We can change the brightness of our ambient lighting and whatnot. I also have uh, selections for our exterior lighting. And we could also give, um, Audi actually gives you a couple of presets for your driver's assistance. So we could actually choose a maximum, a basic amount, or an individual amount. So here are all of your safety features that come standard on the e-tron. So we have the front distance warning, the pre-sense on the front, the um, side assist, which is your blind spot warning the emergency SOS controls, the lane exit warning. 
So it is pretty loaded up with all of those safety features and you could individually choose which ones you want on and off. In case one system's bothering you but not the other, you could really customize it pretty well. We have all of our system settings right here which I'll just go into the uh, basic settings really quick for you. And again, you could customize all of these different things in here. A very customizable uh, system from Audi. We also have our help, user information, uh, our weather messages, news, all kinds of things going on with this system here. One thing I'd like to show you is that uh, you could actually swipe down from the top and you get quick settings like such as uh, adjusting your sound here. The surround sound level, the 3D effect, the speed de dependent, uh, where you'd like the sound to focus, your subwoofer, balance, bass, treble, all of that good stuff you could customize. We also have our Wi-Fi information and our Wi-Fi connection, our date, all that good stuff at the top. And we also can set up our own individual profiles too. That pretty much does it for the top screen. If we take a look at the lower screen, that mainly has to do with our climate control. So it's nice that you have a whole separate screen devoted for your climate control instead of having to go in this screen, pressing the climate button, having to do this and that to change your fan speed and whatnot. This way, it's all right here. So we have our temperatures at each side that we could swipe up and down, or we could just press the plus or minus, whatever you'd like. We have where we want the air to blow, and we also have our fan speeds in the middle. And it is, of course, a multi-zone climate control, so at least for the front you have dual zone. You can unsync it, and then have the passenger have a higher fan speed, higher temperature, or different zones. It's also for the rear, and I'll show you that when we get in the rear, that they have their own climate control zones back there as well. As far as our seats go, our controls are right at the bottom, so we have three-stage heated and air-conditioned seats. For either side, you could press the three dots over there, and you can see that we have even more controls that pop up on the top screen. And we also have a couple of controls up top as well that has nothing to do with the climate controls, but they are simply placed there. We have a hill descent mode. We also have our configuration mode, so you could actually con uh, configure your widgets and whatnot on the top screen. And we also have our garage door openers right there. And we could just turn the top screen right off if you'd like to. Right below the screen we have a couple of buttons as well, so a quick drive mode select, traction control off, we have our hazards button right here. And we also have our front and rear defrosters. Now all the buttons in this row right here are kind of like a haptic feedback um, sort of touch system. And it's really the same thing with the screen, so when you actually tap something, you could hear you have an actual click sound and a kind of little vibration in your finger when you click something so you actually know that you're clicking something you really don't have to take your eyes off the road for really that long we have a couple of buttons down here obviously to power on the engine we have a parking button also this will pull up all of our driver's assistance functions so we can quickly access that we also have a volume and skip knob right there too and then we uniquely enough this whole unit right here is your gear selector. Now the only part that moves is this silver button. So you kind of rest your hand right here and use your thumb and your pointer fingers to switch between the gears and we have our gear pattern right here. So if we go up that will put us into reverse. It will bring up our reversing camera and our 360 degrees view camera system. We also have a myriad of different views that will bring up over here. So we have a front wide angle view, a normal front view, the top down view, the rear view, the rear wide angle view, the front tires, and the rear tires. So if you think that's not enough, you can also press this 3D button right here, which will bring up a 3D representation of the car. You can move it all around, see what's around you. 
see all the cars around us, you can see the rock pile next to us. Very, very intuitive system. Now, a few different manufacturers have come out with this system, but none of them have seemed to perfect it just as good as Audi has. Going back to our gear shifter, we can pull it down into drive, and we can actually bump it down once more to get into that sport mode. And I'll show you up here. Watch the boost gauge right over there when you put it in sport mode. It'll actually extend it over there to show you that you have that little bit extra power if you need it. We also have the park button right there, so you just press the side and we're now in park. We have electronic parking brake here, so make sure your foot's on the brake. The red means it's activated. Press down to deactivate, pick up to activate. Now down here we have this kind of open center console with these two bars right here, which is a pretty neat design. And if we open up this little storage tray here, we have some cup holders. If you would like to flip them out like so, you could use them as cup holders, or you could flip them away like it was, and just use it as a storage console. We have a 12 volt power outlet and a wireless charging pad, and you're saying, hmm, I don't see a wireless charging pad down here. Actually, you have this little clip to where you clip your phone in, and this part on the wall right here is actually your wireless charging pad. Pretty neat um, um, space-saving uh, way to make a wireless charging phone pad, which is pretty cool. And it also keeps your phone in place and out of mind while you're driving. Now you're asking, is this the only place in the center console of storage? No, it's not. You actually have a little bit more storage right behind it, and that's where you can put your valuables, because it's all felt lined in there. Everything will stay safe. It also is adjustable, so if you like your armrest up a little bit high, it'll stay just like that, as you can see. Your knee pads also have this beautiful leather and contrast stitching. And if we take a look up here, we have our frameless mirror with the auto dimming day and night mode as well as your compass. We also have our center stack up here, which has some touch sensitive LED lights for either side. We also have various buttons such as your SOS, your lighting controls, and your information buttons. And we also have uh, controls for both your sunshade and sunroof. Which, by the way, we have this very nice gray headliner and a panoramic sunroof. Now, the sunshade is controlled with this forward button. And it is, of course, fully powered. And it does block 100% of the light when it's closed. Once it's opened, you have a pretty nice couple of panels of glass. And you can both vent the sunroof up by just pressing the button in like this. And you can also open it up by picking the sunroof back. It also reveals a nice wind buffeter right there. And it opens pretty much all the way to the second panel. So we'll close the actual glass portion, but we'll leave the um, fabric sunshade open so we can see what it looks like in the rear. A couple more things I wanted to mention until we hop to the rear of these sun visors. So we can fold them, by, fold them down, bring them to the side, and also extend them back and forth which is very nice. If you open the cover to the mirror, the light will turn on for you and you also have a card holder. And some grab handles to either side for all four passengers. So very intuitive um, interior, lots to talk about, very futuristic technology and design. But for this portion of the video, I'm gonna adjust the driver's seat to a comfortable driving position for myself. I stand at five foot 10, just so you know how much room we have in the back. Okay, so the driver's seat is all adjusted, and now we're gonna take a look at what it looks like in the back seats. So taking a look back here, as you'd expect, you have pretty much the same materials as up front, so soft touch, soft touch and your leather and the bright work you have the lock unlock button as well as your window controls and a couple of speakers at the back too you have these nice little illuminated door 
um, plates. We also have these very nice seats back here too. They are quite bolstered in the back, so it almost feels like you're sitting in a bucket seat. So down at the bottom and on the sides, even towards the center is very nicely bolstered. So with these sport back cars, people seem to have uh, problems not with just this car, but in general with headroom. But what Audi did to eliminate this is they put a couple of cutouts where your head is gonna rest. So I'm gonna hop in, we'll see how much leg room we have, also headroom, which is some people's concerns. And I can tell you confidently that I have about an inch of uh, headroom and many more inches of leg room thanks to these cutouts in the seats. You have mat pockets on both the rear, um, on the seat backs of the rear, on the, of the front seats. You also have air vents that come out at your body, at your head, and below the seats for your feet. And so that makes it a dual zone climate control. You even have this touchscreen uh, sort of system with the haptic feedback buttons. You can control the temperature for each side, the fan speed for each side, uh, your heated seats for both sides, as well as your different zones. So you can see the three zones. Very nice rear climate control. Uh, it's also automatic back here. So very nice uh, rear climate control for this car. We also have a couple of illuminated power outlets. So we have the USBs uh, number three and four. And then we also have the 12 volt power outlet. Very small um, hump in the middle because there's not really too much of a drivetrain going through the car. We can see that the sunroof continues pretty nicely back here, although they couldn't extend it all the way to my head because of the sport back design. It is definitely an oversized sunroof and it really airs up the cabin a little bit. And you really do have quite a bit of space back here. Very nice quality seats in the rear. You have LED illumination up here. You have grab handles and coat hooks to either side. And we also have a fold down armrest. As you can see, you could pop the cup holders in and out. Pretty neat. We also have a storage console in there that's felt lined at the bottom if you like to put sunglasses or something like that. And it also latches in, in place. A nice overview of the dashboard and whatnot. And for the next portion of the video, we're going to check out what the front passenger space has to offer. So again, with those electronic door handles, give it a listen. It'll actually just unlatch the, the door. You're going to have to open it. So the front passenger door is very much like the drivers as far as the design goes. Just a few less buttons as you'd expect. Same adjustments for the power seats. And a beautiful view from the passenger seat as well. You get that beautiful wood and a really kind of uh, disappearing glove box, I guess you could say. You really only can see is a handle, but if you fold it down, you can see you really do have quite a bit of room in there. And it kind of folds flat as a sort of tray if you'd like to eat your McDonald's or something like that on it. You also have pen holders, coin holders, and it's all lined in felt and illuminated. Okay, so another feature that comes standard on the e-tron Sportback is a full powered lift gate. And once that lifts up for you, it'll reveal a very good amount of space back here. Now, in addition to the space that you see now, you also have these pockets on either side that extend the storage a little bit. And of course, that is on either side. And you also have a 12 volt power outlet. You have cargo anchors, which is real metal. So take a listen to that. 
however you tie to that isn't going to go anywhere. You also have illumination on either side with these light bars, LED of course. You also have a two stage um, cargo cover, so it's one that's stationary here and one that's attached to the um, lid of the trunk. And a part of our interior protection package is these nice rubber floor mats and you could also see the carpeted floor mats in here as well. And taking a look underneath the trunk floor, you have quite a bit more storage underneath with a removable uh, tray right there. So this, you can see it has a handle at the end. You can remove that, clean it out, do whatever you like. And you also have a pretty decently sized um, spare tire. Once you're done in here, you have two buttons to choose from. This one that will either close the trunk, or this one that will close the trunk and lock all of the doors. So according to the EPA, you should be seeing right around 218 miles of electric chargers. Actually pretty good. And as you saw earlier, that is where you plug the car in. Again, with either the 110 or 220 volt. You also have the light right here, which will blink if it's charging. As you can see, it shows you a little diagram right there to what the light's doing. Very nice integration to the uh, charging cables too. So to wrap this video up, I hope you have enjoyed the 2020 Audi e-tron Sportback in the Premium Plus trim just as much as I have. And I invite you to keep watching our videos here on NNT Auto Reviews.